In the European Union, approximately 25% of electricity produced comes from nuclear power stations. Nuclear reactors produce clean energy since they do not generate any greenhouse gases or airborne particulate material, unlike cold-fired power stations. However, they produce highly radioactive spent nuclear fuel, as well as different kinds of nuclear waste. The safe management of such waste is a burden for future generations. This, together with the fear of nuclear accidents and possible future consequences on people and the environment, strongly influence public perception and acceptance of nuclear energy. Public perception of nuclear energy is the aggregate of attitudes or beliefs held by the adult population. The International Atomic Energy Agency conducted a poll in 2008 and found the following results within European Union countries. The vast majority, two-thirds, of the European public agrees that nuclear power is advantageous because it allows European Union countries to diversify their energy sources as well as decrease their dependence on oil and coal and it emits less greenhouse gases than, for instance, fossil fuels. To produce energy, nuclear reactors exploit fission reactions induced by neutrons on nuclear fuel containing fissile isotopes. If these reactions are able to produce more neutrons, it is then possible to sustain a fission chain reaction. Nuclear fuel consists of uranium oxide, which is often enriched in the fissile isotope uranium-235. Uranium is uh, extracted from uranium ore and fuel is produced in dedicated fuel fabrication plants. After use in a nuclear power plant, the composition of the fuel is changed due to nuclear reactions. When discharged from the reactor, it is called spent nuclear fuel. This needs to be further managed. It is worth noting that only a small fraction of the energy available from fission of the nuclear fuel has been consumed by the time the fuel is discharged from the reactor. Spent nuclear fuel consists of uranium, plutonium, minor actinoids and fission products. All of these steps constitute the nuclear fuel cycle. In particular, uranium mining, uranium enrichment and fuel fabrication are generally indicated as the front end of the nuclear fuel cycle. After discharge from the reactor in the so-called back end of the nuclear fuel cycle, there may be different options after the spent fuel has cooled for a suitable period of time. There are two main scenarios how to deal with spent nuclear fuel. Spent nuclear fuel can be considered as waste and disposed of in the deep underground repositories. Such waste is characterized by a significant volume and long-term radiotoxicity. Furthermore, it still contains much of the originally present uranium and also plutonium produced during irradiation. This option is called the open cycle. In a more sustainable view, these valuable elements could be separated from fission products and used to produce new fuel, made of mixed uranium and plutonium oxides. The second scenario, the so-called closed fuel cycle, is based on the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel, leading not only to uranium recycling, but also to a reduction of the overall waste volume and radiotoxicity. Radiotoxicity considers the type of radiation alpha, beta, gamma or neutrons and its energy influence on the human body as the dose conversion factor and chemical influences on living tissues. Therefore, radiotoxicity is an important parameter for consideration in the nuclear fuel cycle, which is based on the particular isotopes present in spent nuclear fuel. After the reprocessing, the volume and long-term radiotoxicity of the reprocessed waste can be further reduced by additional chemical processing, sometimes called partitioning. Research related to the advanced reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel is called partitioning and transmutation. Partitioning processes aim to separate the long-lived elements, such as some actinoids. 
The subsequent transmutation refers to the conversion of the separated long-lived radionuclides to short-lived radionuclides or stable elements by nuclear reactions, e.g. in dedicated accelerator-driven transmuters. Partitioning can be based on either hydrochemical or pyrometallurgical processes. In hydrochemical processes, spent nuclear fuel is firstly dissolved in nitric acid. The following processes are mainly based on solvent extraction technique due to the application of citable extracting ligands in solution. Those extracting ligands transfer the radionuclides between two phases and separate them. There are many different steps to separate all of the desired elements. Pyrometallurgical processes exploit high temperatures and has the advantage of being able to treat spent nuclear fuel after a shorter cooling time. In these processes, the spent fuel is melted and the melt is processed, e.g. electrochemically or by liquid-liquid extraction where the fluids are liquid metals. Currently, the only process operated routinely on an industrial scale is the hydrochemical process called the Purex process. It means plutonium-uranium redox extraction. It is used to separate uranium and plutonium from the dissolved spent fuel floated from commercial nuclear power plants. For some time, great effort has been devoted to the development of several advanced partitioning reprocessing processes able to separate minor actinoids from purex waste or directly from dissolved spent nuclear fuel such as the Diamex, Sanex or Genex processes. The general aim of these processes is to separate actinoids from the bulk of lanthanoids present as fission products. Since both these groups have rather similar chemical and physical properties, this step is quite challenging. In Sanex process, it means selective actinoid extraction, minor actinoids such as americium and curium are selectively extracted from lanthanides. The fabrication and use of nuclear fuel, as well as the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel, requires the competency of radiochemistry, uranium miling, spent fuel reprocessing and waste conditioning prior to disposal or partitioning are purely chemical processes. Nuclear fuel fabrication has a strong chemistry component too. Even in the routine nuclear power plant operation, a non-eligible portion of the staff are radiochemists who are in charge of maintaining and adjusting the primary circuit water parameters. The knowledge of radiochemists is indispensable to the role of nuclear fuel cycle.